the dot product level 4. In this video, we're going to go over slightly more challenging examples that make use of the dot product. Let's jump straight into the first example. If u is a unit vector, find u dot v and u dot w. Okay, here we have an equilateral triangle with vectors as sides. We are asked to find two separate dot products, in this case, u dot v and u dot w. Let's first find u dot v. According to the problem, u is a unit vector. This means that it has a magnitude equal to 1. Now, this also means that vector v and vector w also have a magnitude equal to 1 since they form the sides of an equilateral triangle. So all the sides have the same length. Recall from elementary geometry that an equilateral triangle has three congruent angles, each measuring 60 degrees. So the angle between these vectors is going to be equal to 60 degrees. All right, with this information, we can use the geometric definition of the dot product to find u dot v. Substituting the magnitudes and angle, we obtain the following expression. Simplifying, we obtain one half as a final answer. Next, let's find u dot w. In order to find the dot product of these two vectors, we need to align them tail to tail. So let's go ahead and move the tail of vector u and align it with the tail of vector w. Next, we need to calculate the angle between these two vectors. We can easily find the angle by using the linear pairs and subtracting 60 degrees from 180 degrees. In this case, the angle between them would be equal to 120 degrees. Now we go ahead and find the dot product. Substituting these values, we obtain the following expression. Simplifying the expression, we obtain negative one half as our final answer. Let's try the next problem. A street vendor sells A apples, B burritos, and C churros on a given day. The vendor charges 50 cents for the apples, $5 for the burrito, and $1 for the churro. If vector F equals A, B, C, and vector P equals 0 0.5, 5, and 1, what is the meaning of the dot product f dot p? Okay, this word problem is essentially asking us to interpret the dot product. Notice that the components of vector f represent the number of apples, burritos, and churros sold on a given day. The components of vector p, on the other hand, represent the price of an apple, burrito, and churro, respectively. Let's compute the dot product with these vectors and analyze the result. Using the component definition of the dot product, we go ahead and multiply each of the vector's components and add them together. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Notice that this expression represents the vendor's revenue for the day. Since you're taking the number of each food item sold and multiplying it by its respective price, so this expression is nothing more than the vendor's total revenue for the day. Let's try the next problem. Find a vector perpendicular to vector v. Here we have a planar vector, and we are asked to find a vector that is perpendicular to this vector. Recall that two vectors are perpendicular if the dot product is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and use this fact to find a vector that is orthogonal to vector v. Let's assume that the vector perpendicular to vector v is equal to vector p, with x and y components equal to a and b respectively. We want the dot product between these two vectors to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and compute the dot product between these two vectors and set the result equal to zero. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Now we need to figure out the value of a and b that would satisfy this equation. A trivial answer would be setting both a and b equal to zero, 
this would be the case when the second vector represents the zero vector. Recall that this vector is perpendicular or orthogonal to any vector v. We need to find a non-trivial solution. We can think about the classical algebra 1 problems where you were asked to find a line perpendicular to another line. Recall that the slopes of perpendicular lines were negative reciprocals of one another. In other words, you switch the rise with the run and flip the sign on the numerator or denominator. This problem is essentially the same problem, but in this case, we are using vectors. So the value of a and b that solves this equation would be 5 and negative 2, or negative 5 and 2. Either values solves the equation. So a vector that is perpendicular to vector v would be the vector with components 5, negative 2, or negative 5 and 2. In general, if you have a planar vector with components a and b, the vector with components b, negative a, or negative b and a will be orthogonal to the first vector. Let's try a slightly more challenging problem. Find k so that vector a and vector b are perpendicular. Okay, here we have two planar vectors, a and b. We're asked to determine the value of k that would make these two vectors perpendicular or orthogonal. We can determine the value for k by first finding an expression for the dot product and then setting it equal to zero. Let's first find an expression for the dot product by using the component definition. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Then, we set this expression equal to zero. Now we are face to face with a linear equation. So we go ahead and solve for k, which ends up being equal to 3 halves. So, by replacing k with 3 halves, both vectors will be perpendicular to one another. All right, let's go over the final example. For what values of b are the vectors negative 6, b, 2, and b, b squared, b orthogonal? Okay, this problem is very similar to the previous example. We need to determine the values of b that makes these two vectors orthogonal to one another. We once again need to use the component definition of the dot product and find an expression in terms of b and set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and find an expression for the dot product. Multiplying the components and collecting like terms, we obtain the following. We are now face to face with a cubic polynomial. So we go ahead and factor out the common variable b from both terms. And then we go ahead and rewrite the difference of squares into the factor b plus 2 and the factor b minus 2. Finally, it is just a matter of using the zero product property to solve for the values of b. In this case, we would end up with three solutions, 0, 2, and negative 2. By replacing the values of b with 0, 2, or negative 2, we would generate vectors that are orthogonal to one another. Notice that the zero vector is one of the solutions. Okay, in our next video, we will go over how to find the angle between two vectors.